We are less than a month away from the start of the 2020 season of the Overwatch League, and we just found out what patch the pros will be playing on come February 8th. The New York Excelsior will be hosting half the games on that opening weekend from the Hammerstein Ballroom, so go get your tickets if you haven't got them already. To clarify, this patch is still on the public test realm, and we're not exactly sure when it's going to hit live servers, but generally that happens in two to three weeks. A lot of the changes that came with the most recent PTR patch are targeted towards trying to speed up the game. In the PTR patch before this one, we saw the power of main tanks reallocated to the hero themselves, and less so in the shields. That, as we all know, really didn't have the desired effect because now you almost need to be running double shields to make running even one shield viable. The barriers will just go down way too quickly otherwise. In this PTR patch, the Overwatch dev team has targeted what they've identified to be the most criminal of all the heroes in both Baptiste and Mei, as they've had the hero select screen in a vice grip for a while now. On PTR, currently, Bap can't use his lamp nearly as often, that's that immortality field, and the duration that it's around has been decreased. Teams are going to have smaller windows of recovery in the middle of fights, and it should lead to more aggression overall, because you're actually going to be able to eliminate the people that you're in that team fight with. This has a pretty big impact not only on the pacing of team fights, but the match overall. And while we're talking pacing, we've got to talk about the Queen of Ice, it's May. The dev team has reduced the slowing effect on her primary fire, and for how long you've been slowed. Once again, this change should make for more movement within team fights and allow for more high risk, high reward plays. Previously, it was just so easy to get caught out in the open, and if you tried making a game save and play, oftentimes the enemy team would really just turtle, catch you out, eliminate you, and then proceed to eliminate your team. This is a good shift, and it'll definitely help viewability of the matches, as I'm of the belief that people enjoy watching good, tactical gameplay, but they also like having the potential for Hail Mary plays and moments of big plays changing the course of a match. Since the last stage of the 2019 season, the New York Excelsior have been experimenting with a more aggressive playstyle overall, heralded really by the promotion of Imst to head coach. We saw this when we saw New York take Vancouver to Game 7 right before the finals. A new New York not afraid to capitalize on the errors of the opponent, but also not really afraid to make plays. With the additions made to the roster in the offseason as well, NYXL is gearing up to play in a way that we've never really seen from them before. In addition to the changes we spoke about earlier, D.Va got the cooldown reduced on her boosters, meaning she's literally going to be all over the map, and for an aggressive D.Va like Hotba, this spells fortune. He's already able to isolate and focus opponents like no one in the league, and with so much more mobility, a strong D.Va will almost be a necessity for a team's success. Arisa is also seeing her Fortify ability nerfed, so she's not going to be as strong overall, and both Hanzo and Doomfist got a couple of changes. The Hanzo change makes him a projectile DPS again, they slow down his arrows, and Doomfist, well, there's finally an opening to take him out. The uppercut is seeing its recovery time increased, but a lot of Doomfist mains are mad because they're saying that it makes the hero clunky. Totally understandable, but that opening was kind of needed. There's our quick PTR patch update, and like we mentioned at the start, this is the patch that the Overwatch League will be played on. Overall, it looks like the Overwatch dev team is trying to shift the meta towards a faster paced game and trying to promote more aggression. Now, if that's what actually happens in the game is a different story entirely. We'll keep you posted as we watch scrims and theorycraft some more. These changes, in turn, mirror a lot of what's been happening internally in the New York Excelsior, and it looks like they're setting themselves up for success. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the patch, and make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you know when our latest videos are out. I'm Jimmy, or Jim Basco, with the NYXL, and I will see you guys next time.